Hello. Today I'm going to talk about gastropods, which to you and me are slugs and snails. It's a rainy April day, perfect weather for slugs and snails. And at the crack of dawn this morning, I went round the garden to try and find some examples of slugs and snails. Now, in fact, I didn't find any snails at all. And this little hall I have here before me is a little selection of slugs that I found. And again, I didn't find any really big, impressive slugs, just this bunch of rather unimpressive young slugs before you. Now I'm going to start by talking about the benefits of having slugs and snails in the garden. And before you think, Steve, you've completely, finally lost your mind. There's nothing good about slugs and snails. Well, let me explain. Now, slugs and snails are the garden's cleaners. They are actually omnivore. They eat plant material and animal material too. They usually scavenge. And they prefer eating dead or sickly leaves and plants which are not really in good shape. So they do a good cleaning up job. And what comes out of them, slug and snail droppings, are like worm droppings. They're extremely good for the soil. The other thing is they prefer to eat, in fact, things like mushrooms and toadstools. And mushrooms and toadstools are the reproductive organs of a network of uh, fungus in the soil. And this fungal network is extremely important for the health of the soil and the growth of your plants. So by eating these mushrooms and toadstools, they actually spread the spores of these plants, if you can call fungus and uh, mushrooms and toadstools plants, not really, but they spread the spores of these uh, mushrooms around the garden, which again improves this fungal network and improves the health of the soil and hence the health of your plants. The other thing I'd like to mention is they are a food source for enormous amount of animals. Uh, birds, think of song thrush or blackbird, uh, for uh, amphibians like frogs, toads, newts and salamanders, for reptiles, lizards and snakes, and also for various types of mammals like hedgehogs and shrews. So they actually do have a role to play in our garden, our ecosystem. So those are simply the benefits I wanted to look at regarding our gastropods, our slugs and snails. Normally, when we talk about slugs and snails, if you look on the internet or in any gardening books, the big concern is how to exterminate them. Now, if we exterminate these animals with products such as slug pellets, for an example, what we're going to do minimally is kill these animals and lose the benefits I've talked about. But what we could be doing, in fact, is poisoning the food chain. So we're not only poisoning these little animals, but we'll be poisoning the predators that eat them, such as the birds, the amphibians, the reptiles, etc., etc., etc. And as I said before, we lose all the benefits that we had from these creatures. Because of that, we won't actually have uh, a population of allies, of predators in the garden to take care of these. So what will happen is we'll exterminate the population, get rid of the population of predators, which are keeping these things in check, and then 
when some slugs arrive from our neighbors with their friends, the snails, they will reproduce. These animals are hermaphrodite, uh, which means that when they mate, both slugs or both snails will produce eggs and hundreds of eggs. So there'll be a massive explosion of slugs or snails, which means we'll then have to reach again for these poisonous products and go through the whole cycle. So this is actually a way of continuing having these peaks and troughs of populations of slugs and snails. So as you can see, you end up back at square one if you're using some of these products. So let's look at possible different ways of dealing with this supposed problem. So as we can see, trying to treat our uh, slugs and snails with products and slug pellets, for example, just means that we're in uh, a never-ending cycle of battles with these animals where we have population explosions, we eradicate them, and then we have another population explosion. We have to reach for more products, which in fact just poison our environment. So maybe we're treating the wrong problem. Let's look at things slightly differently. Maybe instead of thinking we have too many slugs and snails in the garden, maybe we should be thinking we have too few slug and snail predators in the garden. So what do we do to encourage all these birds and amphibians and reptiles to install in our ecosystem, our garden? Well, simply, we need to think about habitats, maybe having a little uh, water source somewhere, like a little pond. And in fact, at the end of this video, at the end of the music, uh, there will be a link to a previous video I did on how to have habitats for wildlife in the garden with next to no effort. Another thing to think about is having wild areas in the garden which are undisturbed which allows uh, wildlife to install in our green spaces. Uh, this mania for tidying up uh, is not a good thing as far as nature is concerned. So just leave these little areas in the garden untouched. And one other thing, we can always grow a few more lettuces than we need. So a few may well be sacrificed, but hey, even if we're using slug pellets and products and goodness knows what, we're still going to lose a few lettuces. So there we are. I hope I've done a good job of pleading for the well-being of these little animals, which in fact do us probably more good than harm and make up very much part of the ecosystem which is in our garden.